If you have student debt, you are far from alone in the United States. Roughly 45 million Americans collectively owe over $1.7 trillion in student debt. And many people are hoping for forgiveness because simply put, the student debt crisis has gotten out of control. In the past, the US used to highly subsidize higher education, which gave people a chance to work their way through school. But today, that's almost impossible. Today, a college student working a minimum wage job 40 hours a week would make about $15,000. But during the 2019-2020 academic year, college costs averaged about $30,000. Here's what's being proposed and what the controversies are. This is Make It Explores. In the past 10 years, college costs have increased by more than 16% and student debt has increased by nearly 100% which means that roughly 70% of college students today take out debt to pay for their education. But here's the frustrating thing. Those people who take out debt have very rational reasons for taking out loans. Automation is rapidly eliminating jobs for those without a college degree, and college graduates earn 80% more than those without a college degree. The gap in average life expectancy between those with and without a college degree is growing. Prior to the pandemic, nearly one in four student loan borrowers was behind on their loans and one in five was in default, which is important, an important distinction because the consequences of default are so devastating. Approximately 165 billion worth of federally managed student loans are currently considered in default, which means someone hasn't been able to make a payment in 270 days. And that total may increase once the federal pause on student loans expires. Now, many legislators appear more serious about student loan forgiveness than ever before. There are currently two options for student debt forgiveness being discussed. House and Senate Democrats want Biden to broadly forgive up to $50,000 of federal student debt through executive order. Biden says he's in favor of $10,000 in student debt with some conditions and that he wants Congress to do it. And the battle between these two options has created some disagreements. The first disagreement is about whether Biden has the power to cancel debt through executive order in the first place. President Biden absolutely has the authority to cancel student debt. This is the same authority that was used by the Trump administration last year to waive interest and pause payments for federal borrowers who had federally held loans. He has the authority to direct the Secretary of Education to at least cancel all of the student debt uh, held by the federal government, which is about 95% of the student debt out there. But then there's the question of who student debt forgiveness would benefit. There are some economists who say that people with $10,000 of student debt are actually the most likely to go into default. They tend to be more in the category of a student who started at a community college. Something, some unforeseen event occurred in their life. They didn't graduate. Certainly there are students who borrowed $50,000 to go to you know, a four-year college or whatever and are struggling to pay it back. But there's plenty of students who borrowed that $50,000 who are going to get that money back we would see a significant number of borrowers in default have their entire loan balances canceled at $10,000 of student loan debt. It would be about two thirds of borrowers in default would have their loans canceled. However, at $50,000, we'd see 93% of student loan borrowers in default have their loans canceled. White students make up the majority of college students and thus borrowers, but black students often take out larger amounts of student debt and are more likely to struggle repaying their loans after graduation. The Brookings Institution estimates that on average, black college graduates owe $52,000 in student debt, while white college graduates owe closer to $28,000. African American borrowers in particular um, have to take on more debt in order to get an education, um, and they often struggle more to repay those loans. There's a study out of Brandeis that showed that 20 years into repayment, the typical Black borrower still owed 95% of their original balance, while the typical white borrower only owed 4% of their original balance. And then there was the controversy when Biden claimed that $50,000 of debt forgiveness would lead to forgiving, quote, billions of dollars of debt for people who have gone to Harvard and Yale and Penn. And this is misleading. Just 0.5% of college students attend Ivy League schools like these, and many of the students who attend these schools don't need to take out loans. But what I think Biden's getting at is the sense of what's fair. Is it fair for people who got the chance to go to college, a chance many Americans don't get to have their debts forgiven? And what about the people who skip college but could still use a boost? The vast majority of households with student loan debt are you know, families making less than $100,000. So it's true that there are some folks who would benefit who are higher income, but what we would see is the vast majority of people who would really truly benefit are low and middle income student loan borrowers. 
there have been several times in the history of this country where direct benefits have flowed from the federal government to help people who are struggling or to help people build wealth, right? And land, houses, education benefits, the GI Bill, all of those things have happened before. This is not something new or unique that we are asking for. It is just something that will actually help so many people of color in a way that none of these other programs did. It's a very good investment. Sometimes the right way to finance a very good investment is through debt. That doesn't mean it should be excessive debt. That doesn't mean it should be to the point where it's placing such a heavy burden on people that they're unwilling to take it up. The system itself is unsustainable. A debt finance model of higher education is unsustainable. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with small amounts of debt. If those small amounts of debt are contributing to a quality education that can provide them with the economic returns, that college typically does. On the campaign trail, President Biden talked about debt cancellation. All we're asking is keep your promise. Hold up your end of the bargain. This is important to so many communities, so many families, so many voters. Here's the thing. The student debt crisis isn't fair either. Low-income students, middle-income students, and Black students have to borrow more money for the same education. That isn't fair. And student debt is one of the only types of debt that stays with you for life. That isn't fair either. So I think the question is less about, is it fair? And rather, do we actually think student debt is the smartest way for us to fund our country's future? And that is still out for debate.